Good morning, folks. We've got fewer stories today, but we'll dive deeper into them. We've also got the sun not only waking up, but stretching out with a big yawn. Maybe you caught it here in the opening. Let's get started at spaceweathernews.com, and the solar wind and geomagnetic conditions are both calm and quiet, but an active region over the limb put on a bit of a show top left. Now, advanced viewers can use Stereo A to go see that it actually began firing smaller eruptions back on the 25th, but today it turned enough for us to see the action and catch some of the X-ray flux from the event. Minor B-class range from over the side. This eruption was pretty and produced visible ejecta on Soho Lasco C2 here, but it was still not a generally large eruption as we come back to the major uptick from 2001. The truth is that this is how sunspot minimum ends. Little jolts that perk you up to what's coming, which of course is this. Folks, the storm intensifications on Earth that I'm sure coincidentally began on the 25th as well also coincidentally produced a near record intensification in tropical storm Bertha, coincidentally on the day the solar flares returned, and it quickly realized it wasn't supposed to be there and ran ashore. Let's stay in the atmosphere and meet some new friends you didn't know you had. Why am I so sure that you guys are friends? Well, let me make my case and you can decide. In demonstrating why volcanic eruptions have not only shown evidence of localized devastation and global cooling via cloud reflection of sunlight, and not only is it not the good kind of clouds but acid-pouring ones, poison gas-filled ones, but now we know that they are indeed linked with drops in rainfall over regions normally used to relying on it. Why do you care? Because this throws Captain Chemtrail's safety equation out the window with his volcano-mimicking aerosol sky spray to combat global warming. So you tell me. Friends? <laughs> yeah. Up next, folks. The controversy over Proxima B has been interesting. Is it there? Is it not there? Is it habitable? Or does the stellar flaring of Proxima preclude it? Well, believe it or not, it took a next-generation technology called Espresso to confirm its existence, and they even found tentative evidence of a tiny Proxima C in there as well, possibly 20 to 30 percent the size of Earth. Not exactly out of line with this next topic, a new classification for extraterrestrials based on environmental interaction, but not based on energy and dominance of nature, but of integration, adaptation, and eventually changing their own DNA to better suit the environment. These subservient scientists are obviously believers in the power of cow flatulence. And so we're off. Just a boring night at the observatory, or not. Folks, if you catch our weekly podcast at the website, you know fast radio bursts are going to play an enormous role in the future of astronomy. Their dispersion of signal caused by their passage through space plasma should tell us about the line of sight region. And now, they've got a whole lot of data to put together. And in doing so, they believe they've mapped and accounted for the entirety of the cosmic normal matter, the baryons. And here is where I started to get suspicious. They posted the key FRB analysis and even showed the cosmic web environment through which they believe it came. Now when you picture the millions of light years, maybe billions, through all of this, which by the way, they have not actually mapped. This is a 3D model of their best guess. That straight line is supposed to be the FRB coming right at us the lines of sight that they have analyzed to get that baryon content. But the numbers in this paper don't really change much of anything in anybody with a logical mind. The error ranges are 50% of the total value. That's 50% of the total value in case you missed that. But also, here are five issues with their methodology. First, everything about the distance measurement and redshift better be spot on or the foundation of their inputs are incorrect. They need to know what kind of plasma it went through, oxygen ions, electrons, they've modeled hydrogen and that's about it. They also need to know what FRBs are and they don't really have a good sort of guess for what that is or if they have any intrinsic dispersion that plays a role. And of course, they are missing the concentrations of matter. While the cosmic web is the grocery store, there are a lot more galactic shoppers with sneakily full carts than the security cameras tell our cosmological security guards. They don't understand AGN feedback, haven't mapped or measured the primordial fields, or factored in the pancake-like electric sheets in which the galaxies are found. That was Yale's top cosmological discovery of the last year. In short, amazing, very cool science, but baby steps in a sprint up Mount Everest. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.